If your flat DG controller doesn't work properly, there's actually a way to fix it. So in this video, I will show you four different ways to troubleshoot the problem with a Raider 3 and Raider 4 controller. Now I do not know if this works for Apex 3 or Apex 4, so if it works and you can confirm it, feel free to comment down below. Now let's get right into it. If your analog stick or your analog trigger has a problem, whether it is inaccurate or it's drifting, you can try stick calibration. In order to do so, you have to put your controller on the flat surface and you have to press the combination of select, start and D part up a few seconds. Doing so, a red LED indicator will start flashing, you have now entered calibration mode. Now you have to wait for 3 seconds first and after that, turn to analog stick a few times very slowly. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to turn a bit faster so you can go, we can go through the process. After turning analog stick a few times, pick up the controller, make sure that the analog trigger is in analog mode and press both analog trigger a few times as well. Once you have finished it, put the controller back down and press the combination again. The controller has now finalized calibration process and is ready to go. I highly recommend calibrating your stick and trigger after unboxing and firmware update to make sure they perform properly. Now, if your motion sensor on the controller is experiencing a problem, either it's drifting, it's unresponsive, or it's inaccurate, you can try shadow calibration. In order to do so, you put your controller back on the surface and you use the combination of select, start, and D part down. Now, you have to press it for a couple of seconds, and this takes longer than stick calibration. Once you see the red light indicator flashing, you know that you have success. The calibration process has finalized itself. You don't have to press the combination again. This is a bit more finicky to do, so if you don't see a red light indicator, you have to try again. Once again, I highly recommend calibrating your gyroscope motion sensor after unboxing and firmware updates so that they can operate normally. Next up, if you find the buttons on your controller are not functioning properly, whether it's not sending signal or it's doing something else entirely, you can try restoring default configuration. So in order to do so, you need to have Flaggy Spatial installed. Now, once you open the Flaggy Spatial and have your controller connected to PC, you go to this page and click on Restore Default Configuration. Doing so, the controller will reset all this button mapping to its default states and uh, we sort, you should fix the problem with the buttons. Let's just say you have just now updated your controller to a new firmware version, but this firmware version has some issue, has some bugs, and it causes the controller to run into problems. And the sensible thing you have to do is to wait for Flaggy to release a new update. But you cannot wait and you want to revert the controller to its previous state where it was stable and there's no problem with it so you can try downgrading firmware now a bit of a warning in order to downgrade your firmware you have to use the mobile app but the mobile app will, will require access to your location data so if you don't trust your location data to fly DGs, you can try spoofing your GPS location using one of the uh, GPS spoofing app. Otherwise, uh, there's really no other way. You cannot downgrade your firmware to the PC version, PC app. Now that is out of the way. In order to downgrade your firmware, first of all, you need to have Flaggy Game Center installed on your mobile phone. I'm using Android, so I install my app from Google Play Store. Now that you have installed the app, you have to start it. Now next up, you want to make sure your controller is on Bluetooth mode. So turn the controller to the back and switch the mo mode to Bluetooth mode. Now put the controller back and start it. Now on the Plagi app, you want to press Add. You will be present with a list of all controllers. So you want to scroll down to all platform controller, and you can see a list of controller here. I'm using Vader 4 Pro, so I will select Vader 4. At this point, it will show you all the necessary steps to connect your controller, so just follow it. Now, it already you have detect my controller, so I'm gonna press spare. And this will take a little bit to connect. Now that it's been connected, you will be see this space. Next up, you want to select Game Part Upgrade. Now I have updated the latest versions, so it has said that I have the latest version already installed. So you want to upgrade, you go down here, you have it, you can see the historic version. Press it. Now oh, you can see it. 
the whole list of love firmware from the previous version as well so down below you can see all the previous version so you can just select any of these the the last stable firmware that you want to use so let's just say i want to up upgrade to 2.7 i press now the process will begin itself so you want to leave the control a bit do not turn up do not do anything do not shut down the app leave it be and will finish itself now that it's not finished the controller will reset itself so you just have to press confirm and now the version has been downgraded to 2.7 as you can see here additionally if you wish to up the upgrade firmware for bluetooth mode and nintendo switch mode you can select si update here and you can upgrade the firmware for switch and bluetooth mode and then there's the fifth way to troubleshoot your controller but this is ultimately the last resort also i have heard that people run into some sort of problem with the window uh, how window detect the controller afterwards so i don't recommend doing this for now until someone can confirm that it's absolutely safe to do but i will include this in this video yeah uh, just for in case now in order to fact this is we call factory reset controller and in order to factory reset it you have to use select start and function button you have to hold all the three buttons at the same time but i'm not going to do it because i I don't want to run into any trouble so until someone can confirm that this is safe to do uh, comment down below and I also pin it now that's a far way to troubleshoot the controller I hope it helped you and thank you for watching